right, off we go then. Um, up on ramps. Um, let's get the other camera in as well now. Just see everything there. There we go. And what I did is I calculated where this problem here was going to end up. Now this is the one that I did absolutely years ago. And it's the first damage that I've done to this wheel. And it was more or less brand new, so I was very cross about that. And although I don't need to do it this time, um, I'm going to show you how to use the big whetstone rather than the little one. Because for something this long, you're going to need the big oblong whetstone. And uh, where is it? There it is. So the whetstone's got a bit of a sort of chamfer to it. And that's where I've been using it on the wheel, I suppose, years ago. And uh, there's obviously a coarse side and a fine side. And we'll start with the fine side. So this is where the damage is. It started there, went all the way round to there. And uh, yesterday I had to look at the front one, which I did just as bad. And that was getting to look a bit like this, where it's gone yellow at the edges of the lacquer. So I gave that a good polish and uh, yeah, that looked fine afterwards, looks much better. So uh, let's have a go at this. First of all, we need a bucket of soapy water, which I've got here, wet stone, and then you just, if it's all damaged around here, and this is the first attempt I had, I didn't actually get rid of all of the dents in it, although I did on the front one. So let's pretend this has just been recently mangled. And here we go, get the wet stone in as close as you can to the tyre. And that's why you need the water, uh, because then it lubricates and doesn't get stuck to the tyre. Now, if you want, you can put um, masking tape on the tyre as well. That helps, but I haven't got any. So this is the, just the case of doing that. And it's quite hard work when it's just been done, because obviously you've got the lumps and bumps in it. Uh, that you got from the curb but this is the plan and you can hear it sort of scrunching away a bit getting rid of bits of lacquer and so on let's see if we can get rid of that dent now that dent's probably best got rid of using um, either a smaller wet stone which I've got around somewhere hold on here it is that's my small wet stone uh, which I've just used on my E64 to get rid of a tiny little bit of curbing and that's perfect for that because it's, uh, I'll show you what I mean. Um, it really does fit in nicely into the tyre there. And so you can get, get a good angle on it as well. So yeah, it was really good for um, a small amount of curbing, but this much, well, we're gonna have to use the wet stone. That's the plan. So yeah, there we go again, off we go. And the plan is we just go round the whole area where it was damaged. So we've got to go right round there. Of course, the whetstone's really coarse and it'll take off quite a bit of metal quite quickly. If you find you're not taking off quite enough metal at the time, we'll turn it over, use the coarse side of the whetstone, and then it really start munching through the metal. And the plan is, isn't to try and restore it exactly as it was, because you're never going to do that. That's what refinishers do. They'll sort out your alloys so they're absolutely perfect afterwards. But our plan is to get a shine on the edge of the alloy where it was damaged so it really distracts the eye and it's very effective and you really can't see, I've just done, as I say, done the E64 and you cannot see where that was damaged and that was just a moment's lack of, lack of concentration, a whack into the kerb. Just a little knock, probably about three or four inches around the alloy. Ah, oh, but I mean, the, the E64 four alloys, alloys are absolutely perfect when I bought the car, as was the rest of it. And uh, it wasn't long ago I did it. I was so cross with myself, but not as cross as I was with this one. No, I was just wasn't paying enough attention on a little back road, pulled over a bit to allow a bus pass, and then hit the curb. It was a horrible sound and I hate it when that happens. And you can see what's happening to the alloy here. We're taking off metal 
and we have to lubricate the wet stone quite regularly uh, keep it not sticking to the tire and also to give us a good idea of where we are on the job as well so yeah I've taken off quite a bit of metal there um, that uh, lamp there I can get rid of that I should think with a wet stone but I'll show you another met method of getting rid of that as well so here we go so we can angle the wet stone slightly so you pick up we don't spend too much time on one bit otherwise it's going to be obvious you've done some work there so yeah soapy water you keep doing the wet stone that's almost gone now that one and I really don't think I need the wet stone around the corner down here because uh, that's pretty much flat and we can do the rest of it with um, uh, the 3M headlight polishing kit and I'll show you what I do in a minute so really yeah it's just a case of getting this as flat as you can obviously if the mark is too far into the alloy you're not going to get rid of it all and then you're just going to have to rely on the distraction of the eye uh, because of the polish and of course the a real mirror shine on an alloy just reflects everything rather than seeing the alloy itself and that's a way to hide it so I've got another that's almost gone that one now that's probably close to being good enough tiny bit more don't want to spend too much time there there we go around there there's another lump and the first time I did this I was <laughs> so happy that I'd got rid of the you know made it look so much better I didn't bother to get out all of these marks so I thought I wasn't sure if it was going to the plan was going to work with the headlight polishing kit and when it did then I was oh I wish I'd got rid of those little marks as well because then it would have been much better but they're reasonably deep that pair and I won't get rid of all of them now if you're just doing an edge then you can put masking tape on the face of the tire put up a picture of that there we go and you can see that we're removing metal now go right round to the end as well so that's freshly ground let's have a look back at that how's that looking now this was one bit of distracting so it's sort of yellow here as well but we can get rid of that i just realized of course that uh get the cloth wet over right now we go on to now trisac pad is 3000 grit i think we'll start with a slightly coarser one to start with so if we can get rid of this any of this on the edge and then we'll do more work to get the shine back okay so we've got trisac kit here hopefully it's all there like it is that's the end polishing pad there that's the one we use at the end and what we got there that's there we go so that's the first pass yeah you can actually see that these tiny marks here are actually under the lacquer so unless I wanted to remove all the lacquer they're going to have to stay there but we can disguise those with polish oh dear. Yeah, not looking too bad that that's looking better than it was so as long as it's better than it was I'm quite happy right um, next thing to do we we'll go to the Trizact pad which is uh, very fine 
uh, 3000 grit. So that doesn't really take any metal off at all. It just adds a bit of polish. Oh, you'll see what I mean in a minute. So off with that one. On with the Trizac pad. Say so 3000 grit that is. And what we should start seeing now is uh, getting a shine back on the alloy because that's the, the whole trick of this. There we go, how's that looking through the camera? Looking better at least. Damp it down again. Right, so we've now got a good shine at the edge here. Not going to do much with the lacquer I'm afraid. We're going to make it slightly shiny because you can see that uh, it's slightly damp. Uh, sorry, I mean it's slightly corroded under the lacquer which is going to happen I'm afraid especially after 10 years so yeah there we go I think what we'll do now is we'll give it a polish uh, with a polishing pad so this is all through from the 3M kit so we've got a polishing pad there and you've got stuff to put on it if it gets wet it's going to go everywhere um, all over the cameras I should think and so we got the 3M compound and you just squirt that onto the pad. Now if it's ancient like this stuff then uh, you're possibly going to need some water on it. This is sort of moves around enough I think. But it's, it is going to shoot off so I'm going to squash it in as much as possible and a fast drill is better at this point. Um, electric drill, uh, mains electric rather than a battery pad one because you can get a bit of speed on them. Yeah that's got a shine to it. Now I'm gonna have to use a bit of water I'm afraid. That means it's going to go even further. So yeah, clean it over and it's got a real good shine on it now. From about a foot away, that looks great. Right, here we go. And the plan is to always run the pad from the outside towards the inside. So this side, I'm going to be having it at that angle. Sorry, at that angle. And over this side, I have it at the other angle. Here we go. Bit more water. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Looking a lot better. Yeah, I'm pleased with that. Yeah, now it's starting to look a bit grotty again. But now that's looking fine again. Now a bit more polish, I think. A bit more polish on the doofer. Ah, blew the microphone leads. Here we go then. A bit more polish. I'm sure one of the cameras seeing that. There we go, wind him in. Yeah, lovely. 
yeah that's going to be fine that is not too bad at all so i'm starting a bit away from Look. Yeah, that's not too bad at all, is it? Yeah, it's sort of merging in now, isn't it? Obviously not absolutely perfect, but that was a huge bit of damage to that ally. Really was. I mean, that's a third of the way around, isn't it? That was a complete mess, especially on an almost brand new alloy. Right, I think we're done there. Get the polish off the wheel. Water all over the headlight cleaning kit, uh, restoring kit as usual. Put it out in the sun again. The number of times I've had to stick this in the sun, it's unbelievable. So I always forget to move it. So I dropped my microphone. Try again. There we go. Righty ho. I think that's it. Dry it. See what it looks like. But no, it looks like it's got a good shine. Yeah, it doesn't look bad at all. Yeah, pleased with that. Not bad at all for that much damage. Yeah, that's nice, that is. Nice shine coming off of that. There we go. Well, that's about it, really. Um, yeah, that's as good as that one's going to get. Uh, as I say, enormous amount of damage on that one very cross about it and that was <coughs> nine or ten years ago i should think when i got these and uh, they're rundle 58s and you can't get them anymore you used to be able to get them in a place near uh near wales in the uk and at one of the meetings just about half the car had rundle 58s on them even though they're quite a rare alloy elsewhere other than germany and Amer uh, sorry germany and the uk so yeah that's not bad at all not bad at all yeah rundle 58 18 inch i think you can still get 17s but who wants a 17 for goodness sake that's the reason why most people get rid of the throwing stars they're just a bit small even though they're perfect for the car right let's stand back and have a look at that yeah i can live with that that's not bad at all not bad at all but I think I'll just to get, I always do this, get a tiny bit more shine on the metal itself. Ah, that's better. So you end up polishing the tyre as well. That's it, that's more like it. Ah, it's got that shine to it. A bit awkward to do the very edge of it, alloy, but there you go. That's a better shine on it. Jolly good. That'll do for today, I think. Using this and the 3M kit it really does finish them off really well. I mean, let's have a look at the E64. And this is the one I bonked into a curb the other day. And I tell you what, it's really difficult to see any damage at all on that. And it was quite noticeable when I did it. And that's the plan with uh, this method, is to make it so it's, you don't actually do much in the way of repair, but you make it so that you can't actually see it anymore. And I can see it now, it's down here. 
and it, it hardly shows at all, does it? You have to be told exactly where it is. So let's get right in. There you go. And you can see the sort of line in between the edge of the alloy and further in. And that's the trick with this. You use the wet stone to get rid of the lumps and then you use a 3M polishing kit to polish it to a really high shine. And then it can't be seen at all because the reflections and so on. Right, well, thanks very much for watching. I'm sure you were impressed with the results. I mean, they're pretty good for just having a couple of tools around to do them with. And it saves so much hassle as well. And I hate the look of alloys when they've been curved. It really makes the rest of the car look second hand. And with a real bright set of alloys on a car, it really lifts them up. They are sort of like the, the eyes of the car from the side. And yeah, the same is true for the headlamps, of course, as well. And I will show you a method of refinishing headlamps so they look clean as well. Be another job for us to do while we're sitting around doing nothing. But thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.